Welcome in everybody to another episode of ZB's Horsepower Talk. As always, I'm ZB Zach Brown. Got a big episode for you today, going over everything that happened last week. NASCAR at Michigan, and a ton of awesome dirt racing. We'll preview the Knoxville Nationals with my dad on Crew Chief Corner. So let's get into it. Let's kick it off to talk about the uh, Michigan NASCAR race uh, that happened. Start with the cup race, and then we'll talk about Xfinity. We, everybody thought Martin Truex Jr. had this in the bag. I did too. Well, some strategy played out, and Chris Buescher got the lead. Actually, uh, Tyler Reddick was going to seemingly have the lead, but the team forgot to put her lug nut on, and he had to bring it in before the tire completely fell off. And they shot themselves in the foot again. Uh, talked about that last week. Uh, if they don't do that, they are in contention to win every race. Well, they did it again. Uh, Truex had the fastest car. But Chris Busch was able to get out in front. And he held off Truex at the end. you got to commend him for that. Uh, Truex tried to get underneath. Chris Busch was able to uh, squeeze him down. And Truex got loose. And uh, Chris Busch held him off. And... Gets back-to-back -back wins for the first time for the 17 car since 2009, uh, where when Matt Kenseth did it. Uh, if there was a caution, I, I think Brad Keselowski was going to win. He was flying after those stops, and he got fourth. Um, RFK is uh, is on the rise right now. It, they're peaking at the right time, getting close to the playoff time. I don't know if Keselowski will get a win before the playoffs, but I think he's pretty much locked himself in now. And Chris Buescher, shoot, he might be now a championship contender. It's uh, going to be really, really uh, interesting to see uh, what shakes up in the playoffs. We've got two road courses and uh, Daytona, so anything can happen these next three weeks. But once the playoffs start, can't count out, count out uh, RFK racing. Going to uh, the Xfinity race, John Hunter Nemechek gets another win. I believe that's his sixth, fifth or sixth win of the year. He's solidifying himself as the championship favorite now in Xfinity in dominating fashion uh, week in and week out. And it doesn't seem to matter what track it is, uh, that Toyota is hooked up. Um, overall, pretty good races in Michigan. Um, had a lot more uh, tire issues and crashes than I expected. And strategy definitely played a big part of everything, uh, as I expected, as Michigan usually does. So it'll be, uh, we'll see what happens these next couple weeks. It's a crapshoot now. And people are going to be throwing everything they got at uh, these next three tracks. Can't wait to see. It's going to be good racing. Moving over to the uh, IndyCar series at Nashville, just another uh, spectacle. And the big news is that Nashville is going to be racing on Broadway with a reconfiguration of that street course next year, and it's going to be the season finale. That's pretty awesome stuff. That's going to be a huge turnout. That's going to be amazing TV ratings. Uh, but for this year, they kept it what they had last as the last few years. Kyle Kirkwood gets the big win uh, in Nashville. Uh, the Favorite that going in, Alex Pelot ended up third, so really not too far off, still holding a strong uh, championship lead. Um, but uh, Kyle Kirkwood getting another win this year, big on him. Uh, but I still think it's a two-car battle for the uh, the championship between Joseph Newgard and Alex Pelot uh, moving forward. But yeah, the big, big thing is Nashville for the season finale next year. That's going to be really awesome. Uh, talking about the SRX series, well, this guy just might as well just stay in the SRX series because he's just dominating. Uh, Kyle Busch gets the win at Berlin. It's a really cool track. It's just a really no straightaway, just constant circle, basically. And uh, just the way you're going to be, uh, the amount of Gs you're pulling going around those corners and just not never really letting up and leaning the entire time. Now, that, that gets... Uh, tiresome after a while, so it's really cool to see these cars, how they could handle them that. But no surprise to anybody, Kyle Busch was able to uh, 
conserve enough tires until the end and just take the lead and never look back. I think he ended with like a 1.5 second lead after a, I think it was a green-white checkered. So that was impressive. Um, I don't know if he's racing anymore, but he should consider it. I'd like to see him in the uh, the dirt race coming up at Eldora. That'd be really cool. But uh, big news in SRX, speaking of dirt, uh, Jonathan Davenport is going to be racing um, next week's race at uh, Lucas Oil Raceway uh, in the SRX series. So if you don't know who Jonathan Davenport is, he's uh, one of the best uh, dirt late model racers in the entire country. And uh, he actually got a shot to race at the uh, the Bristol Dirt Race in the Cup Series and the trucks. Uh, so he's getting this cool opportunity to race against Tony Stewart and all these uh, superstars in this series. Uh, moving over to the uh, the High Limit Series, what a great race again. Kokomo put on a show, packed crowd. Uh, Larson Series is doing amazing. Uh, Justin Peck actually holds off the boss man, Kyle Larson, and uh, gets a big time win. His Pretty emotional in victory lane. He, he's been through a lot, uh, ups and downs this year, but this definitely is a big confidence booster, especially uh, going into the uh, the Knoxville Nationals coming up. So, I mean, it was great racing. Uh, Peck had the fastest car at the end. Um, Larson was uh, overdriving the corner some uh, and just wasn't able to um, get the runs that he needed. And Peck just stayed consistent, ran that cushion, and uh, held him off. So good on Justin Peck, and another exciting high limit race in the bags. All right, moving over to the World of Outlaws. Spencer Basin gets the win at I-55 on the first night. A little weird night, though. Uh, it rained the entire week. And the track was pretty sloppy. It wasn't wasn't the best. These cars were bouncing like crazy so much that they would just lose control. It was kind of unwatchable. It was unfortunate because that's a great track. Um, and there was a wreck towards the end, and it was so bad that it tore the fence down. They weren't able to finish the race, so they ended it right there since it was over halfway. And Spencer Basin comes away with the win there. But the race everybody's talking about is I-55 on that second night, the Ironman 55. I think it's one of the best sprint car races I have ever seen. The back and forth that came down to Logan Schuhart and Kyle Larson. If you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and watch it. It's hard to even describe how amazing this was, but both were just giving every damn thing they got, running the shit out of it. Diving in, sliders, and crossovers for pff, 10 straight laps at the end. And came to a last lap pass on the last corner. Uh, Larson just fucking dove it in there. Drove up in front of Shuhart. He got the stick and he was able to uh, roll off of turn four and he gets the win. Uh, at the Ironman 55, and even Larson's like, damn, that's one of the best races I've ever been a part of. So that was really cool. Again, if you haven't seen it, go check it out on YouTube. It's It's been amazing stuff. Um, but that being said, that's all the recap we got. I want to talk about the, uh, the new power rankings that we've got. And... Uh, then we'll bring in my dad for Crew Chief Corner and preview the big time Knoxville Nationals week we got. Alright, we're going to start, start off with the World of Outlaw Power Rankings. So, a little bit of a shake up this week and we got to change at number one. So, number five. Great racing at I-55. He was consistent. Had two really solid finishes. Obviously, one was a win. Going with Spencer Baston at number five. At number four, dropping down a little bit. Didn't have the uh, best nights at I-55. Just wasn't able to get enough good runs going. Um, but still one of the uh, championship favorites and favorites going into Knoxville. Carson Macedo. And at number three. Battling for the win in both races. And really battling for the win in Saturday's race. Fell a little bit short to Kyle Larson, but can't really hang your head on that too much. I got Logan Schuhart, number three. 
Uh, here's where it shakes up at the top. At number two, he was been number one in the last couple power rankings, but didn't have the best results. At I-55, David Gravel at number two. And at number one, very solid finishes at I-55, very consistent. And obviously another one of the championship favorites, Brad Sweet at number one for the Outlaws. Moving on to the NASCAR Power Rankings. Again, here's what I had last week. And here's what I'm going to have this week. Big time changes coming this week in the NASCAR Power Rankings. And if you don't know, if you don't like what I like at that, what I have at the Power Rankings, comment down below what you would have. Um, but this is, again, it's going to change every week. But I look at the last couple of weeks, how consistent people have been, how inconsistent people are being, and shake them all up and see what we got right now. So starting at number five. He's been getting this organization back on track. Uh, it's very impressive what kind of work he's done in the last couple of years to put them back in contention each and every week. He's been very fast, very consistent these last few weeks. Brad Keselowski at number five. At number four, the driver that races for Brad, back-to-back -back wins right now. He's got to be put in the top five power rankings now. Chris Buescher at number four. At number three, staying consistent and just coming out of nowhere getting top tens. Consistency is the biggest thing when you're racing for the championship. Kevin Harvick at number three. At number two, another one who's been at top three, top four each and every week these last couple weeks. It's uh, probably in contention to win every single week. You got Denny Hamlin at number two. And number one, no change there. Uh, the fastest car the, over the last, well, I'd say year, uh, Martin Truex Jr. at number one. All right, that does it for the uh, power ranking, so you know what that means. It's about time to bring in my dad, but before we do, Crew Chief Corner is brought to you by Lickety Lou's All Purpose Booyah Sauce. Original, spicy, and yellow. Go check them out, lickytoolose.com, and see what all they've got. Let's dial them up. Let's bring in Jeff Brown for this week's Crew Chief Corner. Our dad back at it. Big week here, Knoxville Nationals. We're just going to kick it off and talk about the Knoxville Nationals. You know quite a bit about this, so uh, just take it away and kind of uh, talk about, the, I guess, the prestige of how big this race is. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you don't know, Knoxville Nationals, it's the uh, the biggest sprint car race in the country. Uh, you know, Knoxville's the, it's one of the crown jewel tracks. Uh, the Sprint Car Hall of Fame's there. They're going to... and. To put this in perspective, Knoxville, Iowa is a small, small, little, little rural town. And this place loves the sprint cars. And I saw they have the crosswalks all painted as checkered flags. They have parades. People are going to be camping, uh, you know, and out there you drive your four wheelers down the road. It, it, it's really it's an atmosphere like no other. If if you ever go to one sprint car race in your entire life, make sure it's the Knoxville Nationals. It's there's nothing there's nothing like it. I'll put it put it ahead of most cup races. It's probably up there with Indy as far as the the fun factor that goes on there. People just you know you just love it. So you're, you're talking probably close to a hundred sprint cars. And uh, the interesting thing is you unload your trailers. You take all your stuff to the infield. And that's where you pit. So there's no trailers on the in the infield, so everybody's got a good view of the whole track uh they're going to divide up the cars between qualifying nights wednesday and thursday so they'll take half one night half the other uh it goes by uh you, you get points for qualifying passing points in your heat race and where you finish in the feature uh the most important thing is a good time trial that's that, that gets you the most points and then to have uh you know you pass a few cars in the heat race you know and then have a decent finish in the the first night a main you don't have to win it but you have to run good and you'll probably start up front for uh saturday night's a main and that's 
that's the goal of the whole thing. You want to be in the first three rows, I'm going to say. Well, we've mentioned it before when Knoxville put on races this year. Four days of racing. Is it really going to be any day that the track's the same? No, it's going to change. But that black dirt is, I guess it's probably a clay, but it's it's a really good surface to race on. And, and those guys are going to work work their asses off all night, every night, redoing that track. Because, I mean, we're, we're talking tons of laps on this thing with all these cars. So they're going to, you know, after Wednesday, they're going to dig it up, get it water, get it run in, and have it ready for Thursday again. And, you know, most likely if, if there's no rain, I mean, it's going to be hot out there. So it's, you know, trying to keep moisture in the track. But Knoxville, even when it gets slick, and actually it's probably a better race when it gets slick. That, that way it's real wide. It, it opens up. You got a you got a top, a middle, and a bottom. You can you can go through this thing. So it makes it uh, it makes it a better race when the track is slickery. I know the cars aren't going quite as fast, but there will be more passing that way. How many nationals have you been to and been a part of uh, working on cars? Uh, I think three. Went out there with Wolfgang a couple times, and I was out there with uh, Chris Ash once or twice. So, so I, I think three, four, or something like that. It's uh, it's neat. It, it's definitely. Uh, Did you ever win it with uh, Wolfgang? No, when I was out there, we uh, we had a bad night. We ran third. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but it was funny. Funny story on that one. Uh, we were leading the qualifying race. I was about two laps to go, and I guess I guess Doug looked down and, and saw the oil pressure was was dropping about the zero. So in his mind, he he thought it'd be a good idea to pop the thing out of gear, rev it up to see if the oil pressure would come up, and jam it back in gear. Needless to say, it did not go back in gear. Hmm. So we didn't didn't finish the qualifying, and I think we had to run. I'm going to say it was probably the the C main and had the. So I think he won that and then came back from the rear, won the B and started, you know, w- way back. And we were the fastest car, just didn't have the laps to, to get it and ended up third. It was and, probably, probably, probably one of those, those hack jobs that like Steve Kinzer or somebody won the race. Oh, yeah, so yeah. One guys that don't deserve to win. You know how that goes. <laughs> how many laps is the, uh, the main uh, event on Saturday? I believe it's 40. Okay. And they don't stop halfway through or anything like that. They go the whole way. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't. They, they don't have a scheduled stop. I'm going to assume if they have some kind of a red, they're going to probably allow everybody out for refueling. They, they do have the open reds or the closed reds. My guess is if it's, you know, less than 25 or 30 laps to go, they're going to let everybody make sure they have enough fuel in the thing. So it's really not out of the question if you start in the rear that you can't win, but it's it's very unlikely though. Very, you know, back in the '80s when you know you had Wolfgang, Kinzer, Sammy, uh, you know, maybe one, you know, another, but they they were the big three, and and at the time when we had you know, Wolfgang was in Weikert's car, we our cars were lighter than everybody else, and we were making more horsepower than everybody else. That was back when, you know, we built our own cars, we built our own engines, the whole deal. So, you know, now you just, you buy everything. So everybody pretty much has the same stuff. So it, we did have, probably have a slight horsepower advantage back then. And there's probably 10, 15 guys that I could think of that could win this Knoxville Nationals. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, you, you get the couple favorites and all they have to do is just get a bad draw and that you can be behind the whole, you know, just... You draw late and just have to get the track when it slickens off, and you know you still might be, you might race good, but if you don't time trial good, that's you know time trial time trial is everything at this race. It would definitely be interesting to to see um, who who gets split up where Wednesday and Thursday. Obviously, the guys that aren't racing one of those nights, they'll be watching closely and seeing what everything's going to shake out uh, for Friday's uh, events. Um, I'm guessing there are. Like uh, con season stuff on Friday, going in like C Bs and all that stuff. B mains. Yeah, probably start with about an E or an F. Kind of like how the Chili Bowl is. Yeah, they definitely go that. They they usually have some other. Like I said, it's I don't know the exact format. We we were there one time. They had it was called like uh, 
it was like a race of states. They had drivers from different states and they, they had a small, you know, it paid a few thousand bucks to win for, you know, 10, 15 laps. You, you know, I don't think it had any effect on your starting positions of the, the nationals or anything. I think it was just purely for money and for show. You know, they, they always have, they, they have votes for best appearing car and crew out there. It's, it's really. So they've got a, they've got a bunch of neat paint schemes that are. Uh, everybody goes wild. I, you know, there's some really sharp cars coming out. I, I can't wait to wait to see them. They, they look good. The few that, uh, uh, the couple that are, that I can highlight on top of my head, Zeb Wise has a special scheme. It's a yep. yellow blue car. looks pretty sharp. And Larson's all black cars, really sharp. We're throwing back to uh, Paul Silva's debut in the sprint yeah. car. Yeah, that car looks so, good. That was really uh, cool. Spencer Baston has a, his car is pretty sharp with the camo. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah I'm sure there's it, other ones I, I haven't seen. You know, I can't think of off the top of my head, but they. Uh, I'm sure uh, Gravel's going to. His cars are always good looking cars. I'm sure he's going to have something that's going to be pretty sharp. Now, before we get into uh, who we are picking for the Knoxville Nationals. Do you think these drivers are looking at the 360 nationals that happened last week? And do you think they can take, well, some of them even raced in it in the yeah, 360 some of them nationals, like Aaron Reitzel. That's one of them I can think of top of my head. Is there uh, Rico anything ran, can, Rico got third. Yeah. Is there anything? Brian, they can Brian take? Brown. He won. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Is there anything they can take from the, the 360 races and translate it into possibly doing well in the, uh, the nationals this week? Oh yeah. Knoxville's one of those tracks. You just, you need laps to, to run it and in the 360s anymore are not that much slower than the 410 you know they're they're a little bit heavier and a little less power but they, they're still getting around that track pretty good so driving them is going to be very similar you're going to you know you understand what the track's going to be be doing i think setups are probably going to be very similar between between the two cars other than i don't know what it is maybe a couple hundred pounds and probably even in probably not even that much weight i'm not sure what the 360 weight limit is but uh yeah. You know, it's it's definitely it can't just by getting laps on that track cannot cannot hurt your chances any for running out there. All right, well that touches on uh, pretty much uh, what the Nationals are about. And if anybody hasn't seen anything, go look on uh, YouTube of last year's Nationals. Um, who's the defending winner? Was it Larson didn't win it last year's the year before, right? He won uh, twenty one. Was it was it Spencer ba- Spencer Baston last year? Won it? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, okay. I, I remember Larson thinking. I remember thinking, who's where, that? Yeah, because Larson had the twenty twenty one year where he won like every race he raced, including NASCAR and the championship and everything. But and you could see how much emotion Larson had winning that. That was probably the most excited he's ever been winning, besides probably the Chili Bowl and the NASCAR championship. I mean, yeah. that's it's huge. It's it's such a big. It's such a big deal in the sprint car I mean, world. It's, it's the Indy 500 for sprint car racing. It's yeah. as simple as yeah. that. It's, and, it's I mean, Eldora race. showed uh, – Eldora, Million, and the Kings World this year were phenomenal, but I bet the atmosphere is still going to be uncomparable to uh, – Yeah, if, if, if that was a 10, this is going to be a 12. I mean, it's it's going to be just – There's there's the, a reason the, – There's yeah, a reason – The, town, the town supports the track so much, you know, it's just – they 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 love the racers to come in there. I mean that's this is what they wait for all year. It's probably the uh, the revenue they get from this track probably blows off their budget for the rest of the year and you know makes makes the year for them. So you know this is a uh, this is the reason that Dirt Vision charges a whole completely different fee just to yeah. watch the Na- Knoxville Nationals and people are going to pay it. Uh, that's how big of a deal it is. Um, well, I thought about it. And gone through people in my mind who I want. I finally picked it because it is a crapshoot yeah. to pick somebody for the Knoxville Nationals this year between all of these great racers with the All Stars, and then you've got Outlaws, and then you've got some local guys that race Knoxville weekly. Uh, yeah. And then you got you got Brian Brown, who's the Knoxville points leader, and uh, just it's really anybody's games a uh, race. <laughs> but uh, I guess you finally thought about it too. So yeah. Go ahead with your pick for the Knoxville Nationals this yeah, year. Yeah, it's what there's, there's like a, a few guys I've been running. You know, Logan Schuhart's been running good, which would be cool. Uh, I don't know if a grandfather and a grandson have ever won the same that race together. Uh, father and son have done it with Steve and Craig Kinzer, but uh, Bobby Allen and Logan Schuhart that, that would be kind of a popular win. You know, he's been picked up his game. You, know, you got you know he's got sweet. 
you got gravel, um, Macedo, shoot, you know, uh, shots won the thing how many times? You got Larson. So it, it's hard to narrow down the driver, so I went with a little different approach. So I decided to go who is probably the best mechanic for Knoxville, and that's going to be Ricky Warner. Uh, he is the crew chief for Rico Abro, so Rico is my pick for the, the Nationals. Now, we are only just picking for Saturday night. We're not picking the uh, the prelims. Yeah, it, We don't know exactly too, who's running which race here. Yeah, it's just too hard to pick the prelim nights. Uh, the, the big night is what is, is important. I'm going with a feel-good story. How cool of a story would it be for somebody that potentially could have had a – life-threatening wreck happened a couple months ago. Come back here, conquer the track for the biggest race in dirt racing. My pick is Carson Macedo. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, that would be awesome because it was it was this track where he uh, crashed real bad, was on fire, the whole deal. So it's, yep. uh, you know, I think he, in his mind, he's probably got a little something to prove that I'm going to beat this track. Yeah, I can, you know, I can definitely see that happen. And it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be an interesting night. I think it's going to be uh, a good race. And this is going to be one of those races. These guys are going to run that thing so hard. It don't matter if you're running top, bottom, you are not going to back off for anybody on this thing. I think it's going to be, be an exciting race. Oh, uh, just for fun. Uh, mom's picking Kyle Larson to win, to win that race. I figured so she's, she's, she's going out on a limb on that one. So that's, you know, uh, well, if, the Nationals compared to anything what I fifty five just had on that on Saturday night. This is we're in for a treat. I don't expect the race to be as exciting as that. It's just it's hard to put that kind of a race on a bigger track where I fifty five is a quarter mile or whatever it is. It just that's just a bull ring and and that's just a balls to the wall, you know, back and forth battle. Knoxville's going to be a little harder to do that. I think you're going to see some racing at times. But once once you finally get the guy clear, you're probably gonna be okay till at least maybe start of some lap traffic. But you're not gonna hit lap traffic like you do at that quarter mile. Well, it'll be exciting. Um, can't wait for it. And uh, that, I mean, biggest week in dirt racing. Um, but I mean, yeah, hands we, down. Co- we, co- we we covered Eldora with the million and Kings Royal, but there's just something in the air. It's like it's the damn Knoxville Nationals. So yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be fun. Um, Looking forward to it. Yeah, now, no, we are just somehow with... have it on uh, Memorial Day weekend to go with Monaco. Indy. God, there's <laughs> not enough beer for that. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. That, that'd be the, the ultimate thing for that whole thing. Well, we're going to stay on dirt, which is the first race that this series is racing on dirt this, uh, this year, uh, the SRX series. And it was just announced that uh, uh, Davenport, Davenport is going to be racing next week at Lucas Oil uh, Raceway um, in for the SRX series. So that'll be really cool. See Jonathan Dav- Davenport, one of the best late model guys. See what yeah. he can do in the. And I think he'll do really well in the SRX. I think that'll. I think he'll do very well in the SRX because they, they're going to drive very similar to what he's he's yeah. used to. I'm thinking. But focusing on this week, well, I mean that's kind of a pick maybe to look at for next week, but. SRX at Eldor. Eldor's had a really big, uh, busy year this year. Yeah, they have for sure. Icing on the cake to it. Yeah, uh, one interesting thing, uh, funny car driver Ron Caps is entered for this race. Uh, a lot of people don't know Caps used to run uh, uh, dirt midgets quite a bit. He's run the Chili Bowl and everything, so he has some dirt experience. So uh, glad to see, glad to see uh, Caps got a ride for this. Really, well, I mean, I guess it'd be tough to get any sprint car guys with Knoxville going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, I was surprised they couldn't, they wouldn't try to get Davenport at least for this one. Yeah, uh, I don't. True, I don't. I don't know what the, the late models maybe have some big, big thing going on for, for I, them. I, but I'd like to see Davenport strap up into a sprint car, see what he could do. Yeah, I, I think it wouldn't take him long. He's too good of a driver. But, you know, racing dirt at Eldora, dirt's a whole different thing. Most of these guys really don't have much dirt experience. So that's where, I, you know, I, I think a dirt racer is going to prevail at, at this track. What's, what's the difference with uh, these cars racing at Eldora as compared to the sprint cars racing at Eldora? Well, these are the same cars they run on the asphalt tracks. There's, other than, uh, I believe they'll remove the windshields 
and things like that. So I don't, you know, they're just not, they're not really designed to run dirt. So, I mean, the, the speeds are going to be just, they're going to be a lot slower even than the late models getting around there. It's not a purposely built dirt car, but they do enough things that they will get around the track pretty decent. Uh, I, I'd like, I'd like to see the SRX at a, at a, even a bigger track where they can, they can use the horsepower because it's probably Tony's probably going to leave the track pretty slick because I don't, I don't think they're going to want want a heavy curb up for these things. It's just going to be too difficult for those guys. So it, it'll be the curb up to the wall. I'd like to see uh, that Wheels Grow is an option, big track like that. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I mean they they ran did they did they run them at Knoxville? I can't remember if they they tried. I think yes they did. they did. Or even I'd like to see them on a dirt mile, like the Springfield Mile, where they can. You know, these things are making like 700 horsepower or something like that. So they're they're yeah. way overpowered for dirt, for for what they're going to hook up with. So, you know, I, I think throttle control is going to be a big thing for Eldora, and and probably I'm just going to go on limp. Probably running the wall is going to be the fast way to get around. It'll be uh, interesting. For, I, I think what it showed in the past is that uh, early on they'll kind of hug the bottom. Maybe the heat races, and then as yeah. the night goes on, they move higher up and go against the uh, the wall. Yeah, the track's going to gradually get slicker and work it work its way up until the end of the night. All right. Well, uh, going into this week, uh, who are you uh, picking for Eldora? I said going to go with the dirt racer. We got we got a few guys. You know, Newman's got dirt experience and everything, but got to go with the boss man, Tony Stewart, on this one. Wasn't that his home track? I have him written down too, so yeah, I've got Tony. I, it's hard. <laughs> he to... hasn't won. He hasn't won yet, but I, you know, I think. No, uh, he was actually. I think he, his experience at Eldor is just. He he struggled last. He, he definitely struggled last week. Um, I don't know um, what was going on with the car, but just he wasn't able to find any speed last week, uh, which that was a pretty cool track. Uh, how that was designed. That was a neat track. That whole. Yeah. They don't really stop turning the whole way around. I still, I still wish Kyle Busch was racing here at Eldora. I'd love to see what he can do on dirt. Uh, yeah. He's done the, I think, the dream race a couple years ago, but uh, that'd be cool to see what he could do now. Um, all right. Well, we're going to move on to uh, drag racing. Uh, they're back at it. They're at uh, Topeka this week. Yeah, the Heartland Park, Topeka. Uh, looks like uh, no pro stock motorcycles this week. So we're, we're back. So Gage Herrera can't win. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything unique that uh, with uh, Topeka? I mean, I, I know it's a pretty uh, uh, well-known uh, drag racing track. Yeah, it's it's uh, you know it, it's a it's a big event. It's, they've been they've been running this for a long time. The biggest thing at this track is going to be the heat because it's probably going to be boiling out there in Topeka. So it's. It's going to be uh, tuners is going to be make the difference on that whole thing. You got to you got to get you got to get the power down to win. You know you're not going to win the thing without without making uh, making the run. So you know making big horsepower is probably not necessarily going to be your best friend. You got to you got to get best it the whole, whole way down. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, finally the the pro stocks are back uh, at it this week, so finally get to uh, see with them. So uh, who are you going with in the uh, the pro stock series? Yeah, that would, I tell you what, Pro Stocks is a crapshoot. You just never know. Uh, just going to go with the uh, old faith. We'll go with Eric Enders this week. Um, I'm picking one that he's been in the finals quite often and had a couple wins, or at least one win this year. I'm going with Dallas Glenn. Uh, moving up to Funny Car. Yeah, this is another tough one. I mean, Caps has been running good. J.R. Todd just picked up the win last week. You know, surprisingly, the force cars have been struggling a little bit this year. Uh, I've been picking them, and they let me down. So I'm going to go back. Uh, we're going. We're going to stay with my reliable picks this week. I got Matt Hagen. Well, with Tony Stewart. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm picking the the slow car uh, field <laughs> from what you're saying. Um, got eventually they got to come through. I'm going with John Force. Yeah, I mean. He can pop through and win a couple at any time without without even breaking a sweat. You know, it's not a shock to anybody. Yeah. All right, and top fuel. Yeah, same deal. I'm going to go with the. He's been he's been the best car all year. Uh, Justin Ashley. I think he's won like every one of the uh, the Mission Shootout races. 
that they had during qualifying. And I don't forget how many wins he's got this year, four or five. So I, I think he's going to continue his winning ways. Uh, I'm going with what will be a very popular pick. And I don't know if he has a win this year or not, but I'm going with Antron Brown. Antron will be a very popular pick. All right, that does it for drag racing. Uh, let's uh, head into IndyCar before we head into NASCAR. Um, IndyCar and NASCAR are all in uh, Indianapolis. The trucks are at IRP. Um, but IndyCar and the Cup Series are doing a doubleheader um, at the uh, the road course. You can get my soapbox here in a second on what I think about <laughs> the road course. IndyCar is different because they already raced the oval. But uh, I guess just give I, I, have, I have no problems with the IndyCar run the road course at Indy. It's stupid for the Cup cars to run that track. It's if they want again, if they want to do it where it's an oval one race and they come back later and do the road course, that's different. But I think you take the prestige out if you don't run the oval at least once. Yeah, it's just it's just not the not the same as when you know they they, they took one of the crown jewel races, the Brickyard four hundred, and just eliminated for whatever reason. I don't I don't really remember what the what reason it's was in for. the works that in the talks that it's coming back to the oval. They're supposed to do some testing again there with these new cars. So they're talking about bringing that back. Was it, was it last year they, they kept having trouble? Because they have uh, the the berms on the corners, they bolt them down. Well, both and, years. Both years they did it. They, they, they had, just, they're they just not hold it. These heavy, like the Indy cars hit it, no big deal. These, these, these so big heavy. old heavy stock cars hit it and just tear well, it that, up. That transitions nicely to the next topic. Uh, what can we expect different from the Indy cars and the Cup? Well, and Xfinity, any of these cars, the, between NASCAR and IndyCar, what is, what is the biggest difference that we'll see um, at this track, at the same track? I think yeah. it might be a different configuration for IndyCar. Is it? I'm not 100% sure. Well, IndyCars, they're, they're not going to use the berms like the cup cars are going to do. You generally, you, the IndyCar, you don't, you don't try to upset those cars. They're, they're so low, so stiff that, they, you know, you don't want to hit them where the cup cars actually use that to get, to get you know, they'll, they'll bounce the right front end to uh hook that left rear tire to go around the corner you know and vice versa when they the left hand turn so they're going to bang them off the curves just to just to get every little bit of advantage you know the, the cup car swinging out way wider on the gas because they just they just don't stick like the indy cars the indy cars got so much down for so it's going to be you know it's it's a better track for the Indy cars. I just like I said, I just you know I'm a traditionalist. I don't I don't like the Cup cars, Cup cars there. I, I'd, I'd like to see the Xfinity cars back at IRP like they used to run, and the Cup cars at the Big Oval. Yep. Well, uh, let's talk about Indy car. Go into our picks there, and then get into the trucks, and then I'll go on a little soapbox with the uh, other with the other series going here. But uh, Indy car. Um, who you got for the uh, the Indy Road Course? Well, I'm taking the low hanging fruit this week. It's hard, yeah. hard to pick against Alex Pulo. All right. Well, I'm going to go with a guy that has already won an Indy, uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway this year. The Indy 500 winner, Joseph Newgarden. That was my. That was I. I had him down as my second pick. If I decided to change it's my mind, coming down to those two for the championship. So it's <laughs> back and been back and forth with them. Yeah. Um. All right, well, let's get into NASCAR. First, talk about trucks at IRP. This is the first playoff race uh, for uh, the truck series uh, heading in. So um, really cool track. I've always liked it. Um, the trucks, will they, they always seem to put on a pretty decent show here, too. Yeah, it's, a, a, thousand it's a good, cautions, it's, so. uh, so what is it, three quarters of a mile, I believe. It's a good track. It's, it's, it's got a good, you know, a racing, a good surface to race on. The trucks will be uh, side by side. You know, as long as they don't crash each other, I think you can get a good show out of it. Uh, it's also uh, Shane Van Gisbergen's truck debut. Cheeseburger. So, <laughs> so if you don't, if you don't remember, he's the one that jumped in the uh, Cup cars and put a whooping on on the Chicago Street Course. And he's actually back this week too in the Cup. Yeah, I, I, I think he's going to have a little tougher time in the in the trucks at IRP. I don't know. Uh, if you just don't wreck, you'll probably get top 15. Yeah. So it just kind yes. of depends. Uh, I mean, he's he's had oval experience in Australia. He knows how to race. I mean, it, it could oh, be. He's, he's a great driver. I mean, he's used to just the trucks are just kind of a different breed. I think I think he'll be 
I think he'd be better off probably in a cup car. It's probably closer to what he's normally driving. Yeah. Um, all right, again, trucks at IRP. It's the uh, the first round of the playoffs, first race of the playoffs for them. Uh, and then they are, I believe they're off for a couple weeks. Yeah, I believe so. So, uh yeah, so my truck picks people, have been been pretty lucky, and I, I just I'm just pulling them out of my ass on that one. So, I'm just, you know, <laughs> well, uh, it's only a couple of them that really prevailed, anyways, this year. So. Yeah. All right, Who, who's your pick for the IRP pit, or IRP race? I got Ben Rhodes. I'm I'm going with the uh, the regular season champion uh, Corey Heim for IRP. As between him and Hosevar, because Hosevar had had such such good momentum going into the playoffs, but yeah, Hosevar's so, been running running well. I, you know, I'm glad to see. I think maybe he kind of grew up a little bit. Yeah. After having that controversy and kind of getting called out by a couple, you know, like Dale Jr. a couple guys, were like, hey, you know, don't don't be driving like that. And it seems like you know maybe uh, the light clicked for him. So you know, between good. him and Chastain, kind of about the same time that light clicked. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. All right, going to Xfinity racing at the uh, the road course. Um, I think you'll see a bunch, a few doubleheader guys between the Xfinity and Cup. Like yeah. I think AJ is racing uh, both races, which his kids do today. So <laughs> it has not been. Born I, didn't, yet. I didn't realize that. So, yeah. yeah. So it it could be any day now this week. He might if it comes Saturday. Maybe he won't even be here. But yeah, uh, that, that could that could throw a monkey wrench in my pick. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I, yeah, I got AJ Allmendinger for the Xfinity race. All right, we well, yeah, have. I, right. I think he won it last year. Or yes, the year before. Yes, and he won the inaugural race for the Cup race for the yeah. Cup series the year before. Um, I'm going with the uh, the previous winner of a road course. He got his first time win ever, and it, it was his first road course, obviously. Sam Mayer. And he's had a lot of good momentum on the side. I mean, you get one win, that's all it really takes to get some momentum and have some confidence in you. Yeah, it seems like the JRM cars have picked up some speed here over the last couple weeks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And if they can just stay out of trouble, um, because that seems to be what's stopping them, they'll uh, get the late race trouble or something. Uh, All right, well, the the Cup Series... They're back here, and it's stupid, and I hate it, and I mean, here's a soapbox for it. Uh, I don't know if they've fixed it any better, but every single restart that they've had, it comes into that little funnel into the first turn, and it was yeah, just there's, a there's shit show. A crash. Yeah. It's just a shit show. It's terrible. I hope they figured it out to make it a little bit better this year, but they don't need to be racing. They're racing backwards going across the, uh, the, uh, the yard of bricks. That's horrible. Um, it just doesn't feel like Indy, and nobody really cares about it. Nobody wants to – it's not the same. It's just uh, – mm, uh, here we go. I think bring back the Brickyard 400. You could put it at uh, July 4th weekend. Nothing says America like that, and that would be – Yeah, for real. Awesome. Not gonna, you're not going to run Daytona July 4th. Bring them to Indianapolis. In. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. July 4th, America. Fucking solved your damn problem, NASCAR. Like, <laughs> damn. Um, anyways, off the soapbox, uh, starting t- – these are, there's three more races left in the regular season for the Cup Series. There's two row courses in a row, and then you've got Daytona. So these are all crapshoots right now. Yeah. And anybody can win them, and that makes it pretty exciting getting into who's going to make it into the, uh, the playoffs uh, and who can build momentum going into the playoffs. Truex has the most momentum, and he – yeah, he's fast he's, everywhere. He's probably even when be he's not the, the best, he still gets a top five. So, and he probably should have. He was the fastest car at Michigan. It just was not able to get past Chris Buescher, which was great on him that I talked about earlier. But uh, all right, who are you going with in the uh, the Cup race at this road course? Me and your mom got the same pick on this one. I mean, it's it's a must win. He's got to win to get in. He's, you know, one of the best road course racers. So I'm going to go with Chase Elliott. I just, I think there's something in Chase's head right now that it's just, he's got a mental block, and you we've seen that in racers all the time. Yeah. You start racing bad, and you just can't get over that hump. Yeah, sure, he could definitely win, but I don't know. I, I think he's going to miss the playoffs. I don't think he's going to make it. Um, and I don't have him winning any of these next three weeks. And I'm going with somebody that has to win as well, 
but he doesn't have the same type of situation going on that Chase has had. Former road course uh, winner. Be a pretty big favorite, I would think. Daniel Suarez. I think that'd be a huge win out there for him. Yeah, he's definitely in a must win as well. I'm pretty proud, proud of that pick. Yeah, that's a good pick. I haven't picked him all. I don't think I don't think I would have picked that one, but good job. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I think that does it for uh, previewing this week. Again, the biggest thing is the Knoxville Nationals. I really don't. I mean, I'm going to watch the the NASCAR races, but I don't give near as much of a shit as that, as the yeah, uh, Knoxville. Yeah. Now, if this were the Brickyard 400, I'd feel a lot better. But it's not. It's not really Crown Jewel anymore. Uh, I'm excited to see the the Nationals and see. Uh, what there's probably going to be somebody that is going to surprise somebody to run up there. there usually is. It's like like Spencer Basin went in last year. I mean, it's like you knew him, he was running good, and all of a sudden you win the Knoxville Nationals. Like, where the hell did he come from? Well, just like at the Eldora Million, I don't know if anybody picked Logan Schuhart to win. No, because he was struggling all year, and you know, and he ran and good. That, so I guess it's the confidence booster. So I'm excited for it. Uh, good week of racing again. Um. Yeah, I think that, that's going to do it for today. If uh, you guys like uh, like this, got any questions for us, go ahead and uh, like, subscribe, comment down below. Uh, you got something to say? Hmm. Oh, I thought you, I thought you had some. And uh, follow on all social media. Uh, I'll post it down below. It's at the real ZB ninety three, and I've been posting some just wild ass memes on my uh, TikTok. So uh, just because I figure out how to use a, a program now, so why I'm just just getting wild up on that damn thing. So uh, I, I did like the I did like the Pocono meme with Larson and Denny Hamlin. That was it's a good all one. It, it it gets fun when I figure something out like that. So. Uh, <laughs> All right, tell somebody about it, and uh, we'll see everybody next week. Uh, Dad will talk about uh, Knoxville as it goes this week, but uh, real excited for it, and we'll start previewing, getting into playoff mode for NASCAR coming up. Yeah, interesting uh, next, what, 12 weeks or so? Oh, yeah, big time. All right, Dad, see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>